The Veterans Administration reports that in 2013, 22 veterans committed suicide every single day. According to a recent survey, 65% of veterans say they have post-traumatic stress disorder. What's being to done to help veterans get the care they need both physically, mentally, and professionally? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Tranum, and I'm joined by Nick McCormick of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Nick, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Those are horrible statistics that I mentioned a few moments ago. 22 veterans commit suicide every single day. 65% um, of veterans uh, self-report that they have some type of post-traumatic stress disorder. How can we help? Well, I think, first of all, what we should do is thank our uh, men and women in uniform and our newest generation of veterans. Absolutely, including uh, yourself. Thank you. I served from uh, 2006 to 2011 with one tour in Iraq. I think, secondly, really what we need is sort of a national conversation or a national dialogue about what these men and women expect once they come back home from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and what they want to be as uh, new veterans and essentially civilians in this great country of ours. Nick, is part of the stigma that veterans such as yourself and others um, are not accustomed to asking for help? Mm -hmm. And so thus in the process, they feel as though they have to internalize right. all of what they've experienced over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Right. So, you know, like you said, the stigma is the big issue for a lot of these, um, you know, problems that we see in our, our newest generation of veterans. And I think what that goes back to is, you know, our, uh, you know, men and women in government and the private sector really need to reach out to these newest generation of veterans and basically say, look, what do you want us to do on our end when it comes to, uh, you know, finding jobs, seeking appropriate mental health care, those sorts of things. Uh, these men and women have a lot of talented uh, capabilities. It's just a matter of putting them in the right place with the right people. You mentioned that uh, in terms of many capabilities. I want to I want to focus on that for a few moments. You talk about leadership skills. Right. You talk about the ability to multitask. Mm -hmm. You definitely talk about the ability to work well under pressure. It seems like veterans are probably the most equipped to go back into the work mm -hmm. uh, force, very well trained to be able to tackle almost any problem that America Correct. that America faces right now. Correct. Uh, given everything they've been asked to do uh, in the last uh, 12 years, um, these men and women can punch way above their weight class. They have uh, plenty of experience both uh, overseas and here in the United States dealing with all sorts of issues. So I think really the, the, the critical issue is getting them in touch with the right folks um, and maximizing their talents in the, uh, when it comes to finding jobs and economic Nick, issues. Nick, here is another unfortunate truth. Over mm -hmm. 400,000 veterans uh, have reported that they have paperwork that is stuck somewhere in the pipeline in mm -hmm. the bureaucratic maze of the Veterans Administration. Some say that their paperwork has been backlogged for more than 125 days. Correct. That's unacceptable. That really is. Uh, the backlog has been our number one issue this year at uh, IAVA. Um, and it's just, you know, imagine having to ask a, a couple questions of your government and then have to wait, you know, more than 125 days. And unfortunately, in most cases, it's closer to uh, 300 days, just waiting to hear back from the government with a yes or no answer. And, and so what is the problem? Is the problem that the Veterans Administration is just overwhelmed by all of the, uh, the, the questions that veterans are asking, or is it they don't have the answers to the questions? It's really a lot of things. Um, one, they are uh, receiving a lot of inquiries with uh, veterans of all generations, but also they try to institute a lot of changes, and those changes are taking some time. So that's, uh, you know, one of the many reasons why we have such a uh, outstanding backlog right now. So, Nick, uh, to the veteran that's watching uh, this program right now, to the, to the loved one who has a veteran in their life, they're probably saying, this is all great uh, that you're out there, but I need help right now. Uh, wh where can I go? What can I do to impress upon an employer or to impress upon the VA that I need help or that I need a job? Well, when our organization, uh, IAVA, offers a lot of resources to, uh, to veterans, and so they can find uh, some of these resources at our website, which is IAVA.org, and also we can put them in touch with the appropriate people at, uh, within the VA or even some certain people within the private sector as far as you know, finding uh, the health issues that they need or finding employment, those sorts so of things. So it sounds like we got about 20 seconds left. It sounds like that you are a facilitator or try to be a facilitator between Correct. the bureaucracy and the veteran. Correct. It's, it's a big government. It's a, a big bureaucracy, but, uh, you know, we're very proactive in All helping right. them navigate that. Thank you very much. All right. And keep Thanks up the good work. Thank and you. thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.